What's up everybody? Kerwin P. Slippers and we got a new little installment we're trying out. It's called Slippers Garage. You'll be able to check out some of the stuff I'm working on instead of your boy Terrell. So today we're going to be putting electronic ignition on this here 1974 Honda CL360. Now I've already done this job on my CB175 so I figured I'd film it for this. I'm getting rid of the points on this bike because points are old and outdated and I want to put electronic ignition on here to make it better, give it some more speed, give it some more acceleration, just help it out overall in general. They make this kit, four into one makes a little kit you can buy that comes with this regulator rectifier to improve the charging system and the Charlie's Place electronic ignition. Now if you just want to buy the electronic ignition itself, you can go to charliesplace.com and just buy this. But I wanted to get the kit to upgrade the charging system too. Now they make a bunch of different electronic ignitions for all different uh, Hondas on there. And when you buy one for the 360, they have two different ones. They have the 312 and the 369, so you want to make sure you buy the right one, and I'm going to tell you what to check before you buy, so you know you're going to get the right one for your 360. Okay, we're going to remove this points cover, and we got to look at the number stamped on the advancer to figure out which kit that we want. I don't think these are the original screws for this cover, because the person that owned it, I'm pretty sure, ran these in here, because they're different thread. Pop this off. All right, so there's the points and condenser plate. Now there's a number stamped on here. It says 369. I don't know if you can see that, Mr. Cameraman, way down in there. But that's not the number you're going to be going off of, okay? You're going off the number that's on the advancer plate underneath that. So we're going to take this plate off now and look and see what number is on there. And I already know because I already looked. But I'm going to show you. Ugh. So you want to take these off. Phillips. Well, don't want to lose them. Keep everything in this cover right here so we don't lose our stuff. This should just, uh, Pull off. Whoa. Okay. Now you can see there's a number stamped right in here. Yours will either say 369 or 312. Mine says 312. So I got the kit that says 312. First things first, make sure the power's off. Make sure there's no key in it on, and then you're going to want to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery before, you, before we start doing any technical stuff. Now I got a lithium ion battery in here because the uh, lead acid batteries suck. Those things go bad every two seconds it seems like. Oh, wrong screwdriver again. that negative terminal loose. Here we go, nice and loose. Put that on there just in case. So now you can take the points off. I already loosened it up. Then we'll disconnect these wires here in a minute. Then we're gonna pull this advancer off too. 10 millimeter. There we go. Break it loose. Make sure got some good snap back action on there too. So this should just pull out. 
screwdriver and pry it out. All right, got a screwdriver. That just comes out nice and easy. So there's that advancer. Now you can see the 312 on there. Yours might say 369. Mine says 312. So, looks like it's got some good snap back action on there. You want to check for that. Make sure it's moving good. And then we'll pull the tank and get the rest of this points and condenser off of there. Got the tank off. Now let's connect, disconnect these points. Whoop. So, there's one, and there's two. Look, done. Don't need this crap anymore. Old outdated crap. Get out of here, get out of my garage. And then the condenser is right here. I'm mounted on this coil. We're gonna take that off. And then disconnect that too. Two Phillips screws mounted on this coil. Don't make it easy, do they? Don't want to strip them out either. I'm going to be replacing these coils anyway with some high output coils. That way we can get the most maximum usage out of that new electronic ignition. Got it. Condenser off. Now let's disconnect it. Yellow wire right there and blue wire right there and then that's off. Ugh, get out of my face. Disgusting. Alright, now we're ready. Crack into this baby. Take that off. Let's we'll see what they got me in here. <gasps> Some paper. <gasps> oh, 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 look at that. Look at this little beauty. There's the rotor. Set that down. Look at that, there's the electronic ignition. Look at how pretty that is. A little Allen wrench in there. A little note. This is important. Do not attempt insulation before reading instructions. Please visit Slipper's website. Just kidding. But if you want to double check and make sure you're doing it right, you can check out their little instructions too. Don't want to avoid that warranty, baby. Okay, so we're going to install the new rotor. And you got these two little magnet holes right there. So we're going to take the old one off. Get rid of that. Maybe I should clean this up before I put the new one on. But yeah, again, you want to test that spring action. Now I'm going to clean this up. But you're going to want these two little magnet marks facing down. Where that arrow is going down, you're going to install it like that. So after I clean this up, I'm going to throw it down. Just like this. Arrow there, number there, little lines facing down. Cleaned up, installed, snapping back. So now we can put it on. I think that's the right way. Maybe, oh, there we go. I think. We are. All right, so we got this bolted in. Put that back in, 10 millimeter. Now we're ready to hook this up. So we'll hook it on. Push this on there like that. Whoop, well, just avoided the warranty. Ruin. Ruin. Okay, put these back in to hold it in place. And then we'll hook up these wires. Don't want that baby flopping out. Make it a little easy on myself. Alright, hooking up these wires. So you got the blue wire right there. That's pretty simple, right? Blue to blue. Okay. There we go. Nice and 
plugged in. And we got the yellow, yellow to yellow. Pretty simple. Now, the fun part. Now we got these two black wires coming out of here. So this left side coil, we're gonna unplug from the harness and plug into this little pigtail wire coming off of here. Okay, we got that one plugged in. Now, we're just gonna take this, plug it right into here. Right into the wiring harness and where the right side coil's plugged into. Voila! Make sure they're nice and tight in there. Don't want these babies coming loose. There we go, it's all in. We're all in now! Then you're gonna wanna neatly wrap this back up under here, tuck it away. That way it's not in your way, getting all jacked up. There you go. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, make sure we got the timing and everything right. Okay, so I rotated this more towards how they had it on their picture on their website, so probably want it more like this when you install it. That way it's easier for this wire to have more of a straight shot out of there. And I didn't want this screw hitting on these little things right there. So that's how you want to have it. Okay, so now it's time to time this baby and I am not good with those sort of things. Luckily my good buddy Terrell was in the area at a pool party, so he said he'd be swinging by any minute now. Yeah, and that minute is now. Oh, there he is. Look who it is. Slippers. I was at a pool party enjoying myself. What's so important? You said this was, there was some kind of medical emergency. Yeah, well, the medical emergency is on the CL360. That isn't a medical emergency. That's a motorcycle. Well, it's medical to me. So what do you want? What do you want me to do? I need you to help me time this baby. I'm, I'm uh -huh. not that good at it. Now, Slippers has got these instructions on how to time this thing on this iPad right here. I'm trying to walk myself through this, so I've never done this before, so bear with me. But one thing they did say is they don't want you to use a static timing light. So in case you don't know what a static timing light is, that's this here. The timing light like you use on a car. They do. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been at that pool party drinking. <laughs> Excuse me, they do not want you to use this. So don't use this type of timing light. They want you to use a 12 volt test light. So it's a little confusing the instructions when I read through them. So what they want you to do first is, is to hook the test light, the 12 volt test light to the yellow side of the coil that goes to the trigger module and then ground it somewhere good on the fin. Now we took the spark plugs out too to kind of help us from fighting compression. So in order to find the yellow side so you know which way to spin this thing is if you peel back these wires a little bit you can see that the yellow wire is on this module and the blue wire is on this one because these are taking the place of the points that were on here. And then they want you to remove this cover here and they want you to use a wrench. Now I tried using a socket wrench, but when you get to the certain part, it wants to flip out of your hands. So you gotta use a wrench so you can control the rotor here. And then you have time, you have marks on here, F and LF. And right here is where we're gonna be focusing on. So the first thing they want you to do is make sure you got all the power off and they want the magnets on this rotor to be facing away from here before you even turn the power on. So we're going to have to rotate the, the crankshaft to get the two magnets that are on the rotor back here. Now you can see the little magnets are right here on the back side. Those two little dots are the magnets. 
We want those away from here before we even turn power on. They say you could damage this. And this rotor plate's gotta be tight because this thing has to be grounded. So you can't have this loose, it's gotta be tight. So you have to have your magnets back here before you even turn the power on. Now, which way do I turn it? Well, we know our yellow wire is up here so we're gonna wanna turn this counterclockwise so we get the rotor to go in this direction. If we go clockwise, we're going the other way and we're gonna pick up this one first. And it doesn't tell you that in the instructions. All right, slippers. When he turns the key on, the light should come on. All right. Now as we rotate this, it says that in the instructions, that the light's gonna go off. Now I'm kinda holding this with my finger because at some point it's gonna wanna jump. See how it wants to jump? Now they said the light's gonna go off, then it's gonna come back on. All right, and we're gonna pull it back. Now, I don't know if the camera can see this, but we want this LF mark. Now the light should come on when this LF mark matches up with that. Now it should be pretty close. They, I'm sure they try to get this close. Okay, so we're off a little bit. All right, so we're gonna turn it back. We're gonna kill the power. And now we're gonna we're gonna turn this rotor a little bit. I'm gonna try going counterclockwise first. I want just the hair. Now we gotta tighten it back down again. All right, now I'm gonna back this up some. Get those magnets away. Oh. All right, slippers, turn it on. Yeah, I want to jump because that's the lobe on the cam that's doing that. All right, now we're getting close to that LF. Oh, go back. Let's try it again. A little too much. Turn the key off, slippers. So I went counterclockwise. See how this has got, you gotta have patience if you're doing this stuff. If you have no patience, throw your tools in the garbage right now. All right. Magnets are back here, turn the key on. Pop it off down there. Oh yeah, Fourth of July, it's America's birthday. Whoa! Happy birthday, America! Lights off. Lights gonna come back on. All right, go off. Let's see if we got that. Bam! Right there. Off, let's try it again. Bam! All right. Turn the key off. Now, to do the right side, the other side, the blue wire, we just want to hook this into here. Again, we're going to go the same way, counterclockwise with the wrench. This time we're looking for the F mark to line up. All right, slippers, turn the key on. Now we're gonna go this way. Light goes off. Get 
this wire out of the way. All hooked around everything. Here comes the F, right here. Whoa, look at that. Pretty close. Off by a hair. All right, turn the key off. So to adjust that side, you move this module itself. So they give you the little Allen wrench and you loosen the screws. And I'm gonna try to move this just a hair this way. Oh, I don't have it loose enough. I moved it just a hair and I gotta tighten it down. All right, slippers, turn the key on. Let's see if we can get that to line up. Oh, too much. Wrong way. All right, turn the key off. I went the wrong way. Let me go this way. All right, that's all the way this way. As far as it'll go. All right, slippers, turn the key back on. Oh, look at that, right on the money. Right on the money. That's how they want you to time that. All right, slippers, turn the key off. All right. So, that's what it takes to do the timing on this aftermarket Points replacement on this CB360. Yeah, it's a CL. Oh, whatever. I don't think, I'm not one for models. I just know how to fix stuff and read instructions. Don't you know how to read instruction slippers? It tells you right in there what to do. Yeah, they were a little confusing to me. Yeah, I guess when you're old, you get confused easily. That's why you hit the gas instead of the brake. All right, let me put it back together. Now it did yeah. say in there, did you read further? No, I didn't. It said to be careful when you put this cover on. Don't force it, because it could hit these modules. So it seems to me, is that the way it goes, or does it go like this? Probably goes like that. So it's got a little mark on there for the spark yeah. plug. So it said... That rubber piece, I think. It's gonna be hitting against there. It said to make sure that it doesn't hit that it fits on there and doesn't hit these things because it'll damage them. Uh, I don't know why they would make them and then it would hit. Yeah, that's pretty odd. Seems like it's like it's okay to me. Yeah, it looks like it. Maybe you should leave this off and we should start it. Yeah, I wanted to try it out first. All right, put that cover back on. Look, now I got oil on my swimsuit. Oh! I gotta quit answering the phone. All right, now that all that stuff's in, we can install this regulator rectifier. So we're gonna take off the old ones and put this in, get rid of that old stuff get the charging system better. So first, gotta take off the old regulator and the old rectifier. On this baby, it's under here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's mounted down here. I'm gonna pull that baby off, unplug all them wires. That's what we want off. Looks like 10 millimeter. So it's easier to get to the regulator and the rectifier if you just take the battery box out. So I disconnected my battery. And now I'm just gonna pull 
pull the box out and we can get to everything nice and easy. Take those 10 millimeters out. This should come out. Hopefully not too hard to get out. Ah, oh, there we go. Probably disconnect that. Oh, that came out nice and easy. Everything's got a thousand wires attached to it. Okay. Pull this little guy off. Got it out. All right. See, look, they're both attached to it. Ten millimeter takes these babies off. All right, that guy's off. Take this one off now. Two ten millimeters on that one. Hot in the slippers garage. Had to bust the old Henry Rollins shorts out back when he was in Black Flag. Okay. Now it's time to start disconnecting. Sneak this baby through here. Got these uh, green, yellow, and black wire that we're gonna disconnect. Disconnected. Looks like that one snapped off in there. Nope, didn't. Disconnected, they're just stubby. And then pull that one out. All right, that's off. One old junk part out. Now let's get this other old junk part out. Got all these plugged into it. Start unplugging. Ugh. Ugh, my feeble old man hands can't unplug them. And these little assistants. Don't want to jack all, jack this stuff up. Uh oh. Looks like they're riveted on. Might have to be chopping some wires. Yep, riveted on. Looks like we're gonna be doing some rewiring work. All these are riveted on. We're gonna have to make our own. Luckily they give you this male connector and those parts in there to make it so we're just gonna cut this off cut that wire get that wire cut that wire and all right hopefully the bomb doesn't blow up oh! junk off now we gotta crimp those babies on plug it in get out of here Four wires right there. Had to borrow this little tool from Terrell to crimp these ends out of these wires. Good thing he had one because I, I didn't want to go out and buy one of these. So you might need one of these if you're doing this job or if I need to know somebody that's got one or borrow one from somebody because you're going to have to crimp these ends on to these wires so they can plug into this little adapter depending on how yours is set up. I know on my 175 I had to swap the mail over on this to get it to plug in. And it looks like I gotta do this, oh, something similar on this one. All right, so I'm gonna get these all crimped on and we'll plug that baby in and hook it back up. We'll almost be done. So I got the new end plugged in. This red and gold is gonna go to this red. And then the green, of course, goes to the green. And since there's two yellows, 
either one of these can go in e either one. So I'm gonna hook them in and then just plug it in and you're good. Doesn't help mosquitoes are biting you too. Alright, I think we're in, yeah. And then we just plug it in. And there you go. Regulator rectifier all hooked up. Charging system upgraded, baby. Step closer to completion. All right, so now that I got the electronic ignition all put in and the regulator rectifier put in, I'm gonna install these high output coils to get the max out of that electronic ignition. I recommend getting these. You can get them at charliesplace.com. Pretty sweet. They'll give you the maximum power out of that electronic ignition because the coils I got on my bike are two different garbage ones. Pretty, pretty sweet. Okay, got the high output coils all installed. Now, pretty soon we'll be ready to fire this baby up and see how it sounds. All right, everything's in. Now it's the moment of truth. See if this baby will start. It ain't gonna start. It better start, that's a lot of work. What, because it was popping like that? Part of the reason, yeah, and I wanted to make it more reliable. Well, the reason it's popping is because them carburetors aren't synced right. Uh, now I got more problems. That's the problem with these old bikes. Did you notice that it was spitting out a little bit more smoke out of one than the other? Yeah. Yeah, that's because they're not synced right. I had that trouble on my 160. So right. now we gotta sync the carburetor. But at least you got it upgraded to a more, you know, advanced ignition, more reliable, and more acceleration power, and a higher uh, output uh, voltage regulator. Exactly correct. So now we need to sync those carburetors. Yep. That's that popping noise. That'll be another time, maybe for another episode of Slippers Garage. Well, what is what, what Slippers Garage? Yeah, it's my new little thing I'm doing. So now I'm promoting your channel? I'm not starting a channel, it's still on your channel. It's just kind of like a little side segment. Now I came over here from a pool party, was kneeling on my knees, got my knees dirty. Now I gotta go back to this party and go in the pool and get this man's pool all dirty. Maybe I'll join you at the party. Uh, see if there. I can come down there, see if I can get I'm sure you'll invite yourself. <laughs> Slippers garage. I do. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a garage, this is a shed. It's my garage. Why'd you call it Slipper Shed? Ah, all right, well, got it all installed. Hopefully that'll help you out. I did a lot of stuff to it, so thanks for watching the first installment of Slipper's Garage. There'll be more to come, hopefully. And like I always used to say, there's your supper. Are you ripping my tagline off? You say there's your dinner. I gotta come down to that party. I'm gonna drown you. Oh, great. And there's your supper. Woo! CL 360 upgrade, electronic ignition, regulator rectifier, high output coils. Woo!
All right, let's see if this baby's putting out. I got this crappy meter on there. I don't think it's very good, but we'll give it a shot. All right, flip her on. Hit the start. crappy meter I don't know how accurate it is but yeah at least we know it's it's charging charging it up there's your supper slippers garage you mean slipper shed <laughs> all right I'm going back to the party all right don't ever bother me again I'll be down in a little bit no oh, yeah we're grounding I want to get some of that food down there I'm hungry <laughs> I need my supper